Hey everybody, I thought today I would do a slightly different video. I'm not going to be doing any flying. It's um, 9 something at night. Uh, but I thought it might be fun just to go through all of my stuff. Uh, it's the, really the start of the, the season here. Um, we finally thawed out on the East Coast. And so I'm kind of doing an inventory of all of my stuff. It'll be interesting to see how this changes going forward. Uh, last year, I really just started flying and um, getting into FPV. And I, I bought some things along the way. And then over this winter, I made a number of upgrades and improvements and, uh, and additions to my arsenal. So um, this video might be a little long because I'm going to try to go through basically everything. Um, I'm not necessarily going to have details for every single item, but I know I, I do have uh, a lot of the, the descriptions or a lot of the um, links to things in my description below. Um, so let's get to it. All right, I tried to organize this into a somewhat logical fashion, kind of starting with the tools stuff that I'll be using at home and then the stuff that I will take out into the field with me. So I'll kind of hold them up as we go. So here we go. This is my first charger that I used from last year. Uh, it is a Tenergy. It's one of the, I think one of like the Chinese knockoff chargers. It was fine. It did a fine job for, for me. Uh, the charge current is, it goes up to five amps, um, 50 watt. So it's good enough for you know, one, one battery at a time. A little bit slow, but it, it worked. An upgrade that I have made, I have upgraded to the ISDT D2. It has two ports. It's kind of like two chargers built in, in one. Much better, um, much better specs on this one. 200 watt, 12 amp. And in addition to that, I bought the Joshua Bardwell uh, parallel charging board, which is a lot of people uh, recommend that you do not use these, but that's if you're not being careful. If you are being careful, this is a huge time saver, especially if you have a number of batteries that you want to charge at the same time. So I don't know that I'd really need this with the two chargers. I can essentially do three batteries on their own at once, uh, but add these and I can do basically all my batteries pretty much at the same time, which is nice. So instead of taking multiple hours, I could probably charge everything in one to two hours, which would be good. All right, uh, I got a new soldering iron. I actually don't like it as much as I liked my old one, but the old one was starting to really fall apart. It might just be the tip here that needs, I might just need to try one of the different tips that it came with. This was kind of a cheapie from Amazon, but it is good enough to get the job done. And along with the soldering iron, I've never really had one of these before. I kind of like it, this uh, soldering cleaner thing. So while you're soldering, you just kind of, instead of using a sponge, you just dab it in here and it cleans it right off. And I have a bunch of these little tweezer things. I didn't get the whole, I have a whole like package of them, but these are really, really helpful when you're doing your soldering, obviously to be able to hold things. And I use this as well, so you can move these arms around to different positions to hold the wires or the components or whatever. So again, while you're soldering, it's helpful to, to have something like this. This came with a magnifying glass as well, but I found that, that was, it was really just getting in the way more than anything. So I took that off. And I've got all sorts of solder, different, um, different gauges of solder. Some thicker gauge for the big balance, uh, or for the... the the leads on the batteries, and then some of the uh, more fine, uh, more fine soldering, I guess connections or joints or whatever you want to call them. I use some of the smaller stuff, and in here is where I keep my solder wick, which is wonderful for when you mess up and just need to take remove solder. And I've got my flux here again to help make the solder better make those connections better okay some other things some new additions here a bunch of screwdrivers so these ones are for um let's see we've got what is this four millimeter up to i guess that's 
you know, eight or nine, I can't see it. Oh, eight, there we go. Eight millimeter, uh, just for, for taking nuts off. So this is really good for props for some of the quadcopters that use those. And then these are little hex drivers. One, two, three, four, four hex screwdrivers. And I've got another small one that I bought before I bought this kit. These guys, as well as those, I got off of uh, directly off of the list that Joshua Bardwell recommends. I've, I watch pretty much all of his videos, and I trust him quite a bit in this in this hobby. He seems to know what he's talking about, so I trust him, and, and uh, he does a pretty good job evaluating gear and things like that. So uh, I kind of let him do the research for me, and I just I bought bought a lot of the tools that he recommended. Of course, can't. It's hard to do a lot of electrical stuff without having some wire cutters. I've had these for, I don't know, 15 years or so. Clean, clean tools. Probably has a lifetime warranty. I don't know. Okay, and then on to some of the more fun things. So here are, this is my rack of batteries. I've got a number of 3S batteries. These are the ones that I first bought when I was learning to fly. These Nanotech uh, 1.3 uh, amp or whatever 1300 milliamp hour um, if you were just getting into the hobby skip the 3s go straight to 4s batteries because now these are these are kind of a waste I won't fly with them anymore they're just not they're not powerful enough and the learning curve you, you get after two or three flights you get to a point where you want to use more more power it helps you punch out of bad situations, it helps you maneuver faster, and, and it's, it, I, in my opinion, easier to fly with, the more, with more power. I do have a couple of batteries here that I wrote no fly on, so like this one and this one, and that's because they're just a little sketchy, and um, I, I basically just used them to charge some other things. Um, uh, which you'll see in my backpack in a minute. I, and then once once these are depleted, I'll just throw them away. Just get rid of them. Uh, the other batteries that I've got, so these are these are the ones that I fly with. I have one Florian. Uh, it's only 40C, 1300 milliamp hour. I probably won't use that one much anymore. I have two of these R lines that are 95C. These tattoo R lines. These are really nice batteries. 1300 milliamp hour. And then I've got four that are 75C. I haven't really compared the 75C to 95C uh, yet, but I have a feeling that there won't be a huge difference. Those were a little bit cheaper, and I want to get to a point where I'm basically running all of the same battery so that when I go to charge them and, or, and balance them, I don't have to worry about different chemical makeups and things like that. I want them to be as similar as possible. So that's kind of my goal, and, and I think I'll probably end up getting just a whole bunch of R lines. I, I really like these. And I've flown with at least one, maybe two of those so far, and I like them as well. These were okay as well. These um, this YPG, these are 1500 milliamp hour, uh, 70C, so I can fly a little bit longer with these than I can with 1300 milliamp. Um, you can see I've, I've also done some repairs on these when I slashed the, the balance leads. And in this one, I slashed the, the main uh, battery lead, but they all, you know, you can solder it, you can fix it. And speaking of fixing things, I got a whole bunch more electrical tape, and I thought it was fun that I managed to find electrical tape in a lot of different colors. So, and there's more back behind the camera as well, but you get the idea. I got plenty of tape now. Okay, on to the controller. So this is, of course, just a Tranus X9D+. Plus. Um, the difference is I put these Apex um, joystick sticks on them. Uh, I, I, I'm a thumber when I, when I fly. I don't like to pinch. I like to thumb. So these give me a little bit more area to work with. I've only flown with it once so far, and I really liked it. The other addition here, as you can see, a lot of the guys that I watch on YouTube started adding these things to their, uh, to their controllers. Basically, it's just a little tiny video camera or uh, video monitor, and I can well, I can plug in a quadcopter real quick to show you. But the idea is, when I'm using the goggles, if somebody else walks by and they want to see kind of what I see, or um, if I want to change some settings without needing to look through the goggles, there you go. You can see that the feed works pretty well. Um, 
it's uh, it's just kind of a neat little thing. And this thing was relatively cheap; it was like forty dollars or something like that. So I thought that would be a fun a fun way to kind of share the hobby with with somebody, uh, or like I said, to, to change settings in the on the quadcopter without needing to wear the goggles because that can be somewhat annoying. And then I got this. Um, it's not Velcro. It's it's this other. I forget the name of it right now off the top of my head. But it's uh, it's it's similar to Velcro, but it's all just plastic. It's the same stuff that like the Easy Passes use, and it holds it really really well. I've always had this. Well, not always, but for a long time I've had this kickstand as well, which I also highly recommend for a lot of reasons. It's nice to be able to just put it down and not worry about things. Okay, uh, some new additions on my goggles. I've got I, the uh, the Fat Shark HD threes. What I have added here is this tattoo battery, so it's a little bit bigger than the, um, you know, a little bit larger capacity than the stock Fat Shark battery. It has this little nice little gauge there, so you can just like the stock one has, so you can see how much um, you got left, how much juice is left. I have changed my patch antenna to be this X Air 5.8, which was pretty highly. Um, Rated. I'm going to change this look here. Uh, I actually have some a different receiver coming in. I have the LaForge V4 coming once it gets in stock. So once that comes in, I'll, I'll make this look nice and pretty uh, instead of the way that it looks right now. Uh, and that's a diversity module as well. So I'll have the, the both, both sides. I, I got the main and the diversity. All right. Um, I use a Federal ammunition ammo can for storing all of my batteries, which I highly recommend as well. Getting you know a, a fireproof, a fireproof container. This is my LiPo-safe charging bag. So when I am charging the batteries, I put them inside there. Uh, I got this backpack. This is I didn't have this last year. This is the Quad Guard BPX2. Really nice backpack. I'm a real big fan of it. You can kind of set it up however you want. As you can see, it holds numerous quads, so I keep my, what I call my little zippy, I keep this guy on the side here, move it out of the way for now. Uh, I keep my vortex inside it, and this panel lifts out as well. So I keep a laptop so that I can change settings in the field. Um, there is actually a backpack, I didn't realize this when I bought this backpack. There's one very similar to this, but it has a slot for a laptop. Had I known that when I bought this one, I probably would have bought that one instead. Luckily, this laptop is small enough that it fits underneath the quad, but it's a little bit awkward to, to get to, and I don't always have this one out when I'm, when I'm flying. So for now, I'll just pop this out of here. Okay. So, um, and you can see on the underside here, there's a little padding thing. Uh, that makes for a channel for the uh, for the controller to go. So that's where I leave my my radio. All right, some of the things that I have inside the backpack. I have my ham radio license printout thingy. I don't think I will ever get questioned, but I figured I went through the trouble of getting the license so that I can fly these things legally. So why not prove it or be able to prove it if somebody asks? Uh, it, there's also this little toolbox within the backpack, which I keep pretty filled with things. A bunch of zip ties, pliers, an adjustable wrench, what other goodies do I have in here? Some balance leads, although I don't have a soldering iron for the field yet, so that would be actually kind of useless until I get that. This is what I used to use. You might have, if you've seen any of my build videos, this is the, the tool set, the kind of screwdriver set that I used to use at home. But now that I have those individual ones, those will work, I think, a lot better. But this will work out in the field in, in a pinch if I need to remove something or add something. Uh, more zip ties. This is really cool. I'm really excited about this, this little ratcheting wrench, uh, eight millimeter, uh, similar to the drivers here for the nuts that's this this will be able to take those prop nuts off and put them on really really quick so pretty excited about this that's a new addition and that's about all that I got and then I have a um, somewhere I've got a ratcheting um, socket wrench as well and again eight millimeters that's the, the magic number I probably don't need this anymore now that I have that that wrench 
Okay, so that's everything that's in the little toolbox in the backpack. Put that back where it belongs. And then I'll go through each of the little compartments and, and what I keep them. So the first compartment, I've got chargers. This is the charger for my radio. In the second compartment, let's see, I've got a charger for, if I can get it out. Um, same, same one. I just dropped it in the one across. So I thought I had another charger in here. Oh, here it is. It's in the next one over. Uh, so this is the charger for the Fat Sharks, the little, um, what's this called? Barrel charger. I've got a antenna, broken top antenna, but it still functionally works just fine if I need it. This is something that I wish I had last year and I probably should have had. It's an ISDT battery checker, so I can show you that. Uh, I, don't, I have no idea if this battery, what the status is of this battery, so you just plug it in and it tells me. Oh, this one's mad. Let's see what happens when I plug that in too. Probably still mad because I haven't, yeah, this, this might be dead. So this one is not one of my no flies, but it's been sitting for months without being charged. I don't know what I left it at originally. So um, it definitely seems a little bit confused, so I'll have to look into that. But you get, but you get the point that I can tell right away that something wonky is going on here. So it, it sees cell number, it, sell, <laughs> it, it thinks it's a 5S but it's not, it's a 4S, so something weird has gone on. Three of the cells look like they're okay, but then that last one does not look so good. So so anyway, this is a, a checker that you can use out in the field, which is, I think, you know, it's, a, it's good to make sure you don't blow up your batteries. And because I always forget, I wrote this down on a little, um, little sticky. For the 4S's, you don't want to get down below 14.6 volts, which is 3.65 volts per cell, and you don't want to ever go above 16.8 volts. The chargers should usually stop there, and that's 4.2 uh, volts per cell. So I can just ne I just never remember it, so I thought I would write it down, and so right before I, I fly, I will check my batteries, and then that'll be a reminder of where I need to go. You can also set the settings in, in the the goggles and and on the flight controller and all that but um when i was flying 3s i had it set up for that if you have 1300 milliamp hours versus 1500 milliamp hours you gotta go to change things so um so anyway i just i just i just look at the voltage that's kind of my my key all right put that back in here i have a bunch of straps a bunch of battery straps it seems that any time i ever crash i managed to slice through a battery strap so i just have a whole rack of them in here I have my, oh, this, this is the stock Fat Shark battery. You can see it's fatter, but the capacity is not even as much as the, the new one that I put in there. This is a 1S LiPo charger. So this is what I was using my, my no-fly batteries for. So I plug them into this, and then my, my little, you can see it's only at 8.3 volts. Um, I would plug in my 1S batteries, which are the ones that I use for my my toy quadcopters, my Beta FPV 75S, my tiny loop. Uh, so that is just about everything, and then I got a, just a cleaning thing for the um, for the cameras on the quads. I'm gonna put this back in here so I don't forget to put it back in here. And I'm gonna put this back in here, so don't forget to put this back in here. Um, I also have the, I don't have it in the backpack right now, but I've got a charger for the laptop as well that I uh, will be keeping inside here. Okay, uh, and then lastly, or maybe not lastly, but there's a couple other goodies within this backpack. I'm gonna close it kind of carefully because it doesn't fit quite right, unless you go slowly. So I've got on the side, I have nothing on these lower pockets, but up here, do I have anything in this one? Nothing in this one, but this is where I'll keep my keys. So I always like it when backpacks have these little, uh, these little hooks integrated. So that's nice. There is a hard shell on the front. There's also a spot where you can put in another quadcopter. So, so this is where I leave my 
Armiton Chameleon will be out back here. And then the, you saw the little zippy goes on the side. And then I can keep the vortex in the middle. So three quads with me when I go out. Kind of nice. Just, just my backpack. All right, so I keep basically all of my, my props in here. So I got a whole rack of props, different, different sizes, different pitches, extras for my little zippy. Um, I, I will eventually get to a point where I have them all separated out in a logical fashion. Right now they're just kind of hodgepodge smushed in here. But it works, or I think it'll work anyway. And at some point, like I said, I'll, I'll make it a little bit more organized in there. And then on this side, I have this little kit, which is um, for my GoPro, which is which you can't see because that's what I'm using to film this. But I have these little tempered glass protectors. I think I have two left. So when I crash hard, I try to, um, you know, it'll, it'll crack those before it'll crack the actual screen on the GoPro, which is nice. So that, I believe, concludes the gear. And then uh, I'll bring you over here. Here's the, the, my primary quadcopters. You saw the one in the backpack. And then, of course, the little zippy that goes on the side. The Armiton Chameleon that'll go on the back. I have a Blade X, which I really don't like that much. I don't know how much I'm going to be using that one. And then this is that little guy that I've talked about, my Veda FPV 75S Tiny Whoop, which I like flying around the house. Uh, I also use this to remove squirrels from my bird feeder. It works extremely well. They do not like it when this thing taps them. Uh, and lastly, I've got my good luck Washington Capitals hat, which I'll take out with me as well. So that's, uh, that's the gear that I've got so far for 2018. I basically had, I don't know, one-tenth of that at the beginning of 2017. So this hobby bit me pretty hard, and uh, uh, and I'm okay with it. It's a real fun, real fun hobby, and I'm I'm excited for uh, for another year of flying and learning. All right, catch y'all later. See ya. Peace.